Hey, this is Taylor from KB Foam Strike, and today we're gonna find out exactly what a dyno hand ring is. Let's check it out. Here we have the Hand Ring Dinosaur Foam Dart Launcher. This thing runs off of a 3.7 volt battery that's included with a charger. It's a flywheel power blaster that can hold 34 darts, included with 40. Has a couple of targets as well. And this thing is a pretty interesting blaster. Now, this thing is made by totally different companies. They just put their name on it, but you can find this thing on Amazon for around $37. I've seen it between 35 and 40, but recently on one of my thrifting adventures, here I was out in the wild at a Goodwill, and I saw this thing. I'd never heard of it, but I've heard of the D-Darts before, and I was like, that's pretty interesting. Let's check this thing out. Here they had it priced at 10 bucks, and on this day, that green tag was half off, so I went home with it for only five bucks. Totally brand new, everything was included. So let's check this thing out. We got it loaded up here, and to fully load it, it has a weird type of mechanism to where you have to pull back on the pusher arm right here and kind of crank it down in order to get it completely loaded up. Now, if you were doing this in a battle, it would be kind of difficult, I think. So maybe not the, the best primary type of blaster you would want to use, but then putting the darts in, you also have to kind of put them at an angle. And as you can see there, that wasn't even planned. Dart just fell right on my hands trying to put it in at an angle. So probably going to be kind of difficult if you want to use this in a battle, maybe start out with it at first and switch to something a little bit better. But you might've noticed as well, the darts that it uses is a very different geometry. Here it is, it's like a two third length dart next to a Adventure Force Waffle and then a half length AF Pro. So very, very, very strange. Here we got it loaded up with the included darts and you know, it's not too bad. It, it, it's pretty comfortable to use. I really like the way it looks. The whole dinosaur gimmick is fun, but the way these darts work, they don't sit in there precisely snug because the way that the pusher works is it's just flinging it into it. But before we fire that off, let's get a little comparison of a full auto blaster here. We got ourselves a stock MK3 running on a 12 volt battery and it's getting around maybe about three darts a second. So we use that as a baseline. And then we're gonna compare that next to my modded up Infinis. And this thing is hitting around five to six darts per second on a fully charged battery. So a little bit faster and Next up, we're gonna go with some crazy full auto here. We got a 12 dart per second, full auto strife. And this thing is a beast. You could definitely dump a mag in less than two seconds. Really, really crazy. But now we got an idea of some speed. Let's go ahead and try this thing out. We're gonna be using the stock darts and it's included 3.7 battery. You just flip the little switch there under the mouth and fire away. I noticed that I had to kind of angle it, not only to get a further distance, but just to make sure that the darts would feed in properly. Otherwise you would get weird jams and you really need it to fling that dart in as you push the trigger. It's just clank, clank, clank. And the loose fit is supposed to happen because otherwise the dart wouldn't come out properly. Now, a fun little feature about this is this thing also works pretty good with some short darts. So we're gonna load it up here real quick. And as you can see, there's still a bit of a gap, but it's also got that little loose fit. Whenever I tilt it here, you can see them just sliding right out. So you definitely wanna angle this backwards, maybe about a 45 degree angle like that when you're firing it to make sure the darts are sitting properly. Otherwise you get jams. Flip it on the switch. Let's go ahead and fire this thing off. Oh, got a jam right there. A couple of them skip. Gotta say though, this thing was a little bit more accurate with those short darts. Not too bad. Definitely a fun little blaster. Let's see, uh, got a couple of these that got stuck. They just skipped the, the whole pusher arm. Let's reload that one that got jammed. And as you can see, if I was doing this in a battle, I don't know how well this would be. I'd probably be tagged out by now trying to crank it to make sure that my darts fed. Finishing off those couple darts right there and turning that off. It's not too bad. Let's uh, let's get a little crazy with it. So I noticed that my 3S LiPo here can fit into this. I wouldn't recommend trying this. This is just for an experiment, you know, seeing how we can get the most performance out of this thing. But if I was going with a 3S, I would definitely want to rewire this thing up later. But just for testing purposes, woo -wee, that thing is purring. So yeah, I got a couple of the included darts and then I filled the rest up with some short darts here. And we're gonna try this thing out here with the 3S. This one fits perfectly in here. So if I ever ended up modding this thing properly, you know, 
it'd be pretty cool to use. So let's go ahead and let's see how this thing does. Geez, talk about an increase in performance. This thing was hitting around 10 darts per second when I look back at the footage. Originally, without that battery, it was hitting around three darts per second. As you can see, we had a bunch of skips on this one as well, depending on if the dart gets knocked in or out. That, that's just pretty much how this thing works. And it was a bit smelly after that, probably burnt out the motors, but you know, we gotta try it for the science. Now, if you want something with 3S power, here's what you want. You want yourself a Lepus. This thing can hit 50 darts a second. You blink and boom, magazine's gone. So if I ever needed something this powerful as a secondary, I'm definitely going with my Lepus. But it's nice to just compare crazy full auto against, you know, the dyno ring just to see how far we've come in this hobby. But holy moly, gotta love the Lepus. Now that we had a chance to fire this thing outside, let's open it up and see how it works. So here we got six screws to take off the pusher mechanism. Pretty simple, everything's a Phillips head screw on this thing and they're all the same size. Once we have that off, we can just slide the ring off that takes the darts. And there's a little gear here that moves that around. We'll just take that off. It's a little greasy, so we'll set it to the side there. Four more screws, two in the back and flipping it around. We got two in the front to get the hand of the dinosaur off. So we'll just get that down and no more rings. So it just pulls right off as well. Pretty simple. And then this is the blaster itself. You could just honestly use this and hand feed darts in from the back if you wanted to. Uh, otherwise, just flip of the switch and it's still pretty good, still works. Now then, we got all the screws out of this and as you can see, it's already falling apart a little bit but we'll go ahead and put this to the side and we'll take the mouth out. And this is a very, very simple blaster we got going on in here. It's interesting that the flywheel cage is going this way, whereas a D-dart is flipped. So pretty, pretty cool. If I was to upgrade this, it looks like I'd have to use some micro flywheels. And here we have the pusher gearbox and it looks like it just takes a typical 130 motor. And then underneath this, we have the firing trigger, and this thing would definitely burn up if I was to continue using it on 3S, so definitely don't do that if you end up getting one of these very weak electronics in here. And going off of that, we also have just this little flipper rocker switch, and I'm not sure how well that would hold up either. Now let's see if we can pop out this cage and take a look at the underside of it. And it's got, you know, it looks like typical 130 motors as well. If you were to put in some with uh, tabs, probably have to cut out some of the shell to get it to fit but yeah looking at those wheels as well they're very weird a little serrated and also smooth so that'll do it for the dyno hand ring launcher comes with everything you see here uh for 40 dollars or even 30 i wouldn't recommend it if you like this form factor i would go with an official d dart and you could even mod it up but if you ever find it out thrifting for less than five bucks definitely pick it up and that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead, like, share, comment, subscribe if you want. If you want to check out some more of the thrifting adventures, click on that playlist. If you want to see some gameplay, go for that one. Thanks again. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.